Hello everybody, and today I wanted to talk about what War Thunder Naval is like at top tiers. Whether you're just starting out, haven't started yet, or you're part way up the tree, I'm sure the question has come to your mind. Especially if you're coming over from World of Warships, where the top tiers tended to be fairly standoffish and slow, and you'd sometimes just lose credits for no real reason other than, you know, the ships were expensive to use. So I have a kind of rough bullet point list of things I want to go through. They're not entirely shaped into pros and cons, but I think it'll give people a decent picture of what War Thunder Naval's top tier is like, short of any major changes coming through in later patches. I have a vaguely sorted bullet point list off to the side here that I'm going to go through. It's not sorted into pros and cons or anything, but there's definitely going to be a few of those mixed in there. I'd also like to specify before I begin that most of the stuff I'm going to say applies mainly to arcade battles. I haven't had much experience with realistic yet, but I'm sure that some of it still applies to that, though all my experience is with arcade, so that's what I'm commenting on. Alright, getting into it. What do you expect to see in the battle when it comes to ship types? Well, predominantly with how the tech trees are set up, you're going to see mostly battleships and battle cruisers because those are the things that are the hardest to get right now and all the destroyers and cruisers tend to be low tier so you very rarely see those short of somebody getting up tiered into these matches and they tend to kind of get absolutely crushed <laughs> if they start to get looked at by the larger ships that are cruising around that's not saying they can't do a lot of damage though the cruisers quick firing guns can whittle away at battleships if they don't pay them any attention and a good destroyer player will absolutely dominate this goes for torpedo boats as well because torpedoes tend to be a battleship's worst threat whether it's outright sinking them or causing them a ton of damage that they have to fix before the rest of the enemy team starts to focus them down so both destroyers and torpedo boats can be absolute terrors in the top tiers Cruisers tend to get melted pretty fast. Battle cruisers are interesting, to say the least. It almost seems like War Thunder has put them in a little bit too early due to the ships they're facing. They can get melted if they're focused, but some stuff like Sharnhorst will take a long time for some of these battleship players to kill, whether their shells aren't doing any damage or the Sharnhorst is actually playing pretty decently and mitigating it. Uh, they just seem kind of weird. Some of them do melt, like if you hit an Alaska or a Kronstadt in the right place, but it just seems kind of odd that they stuck them in when they did. But for the most part, like I said, battleships, battle cruisers, and a scattering of the rest. Going off what I said about battle cruisers too, every once in a while you'll see some World War One ships get tossed into these higher tier games, and I'm talking 7.0 currently, that really can't do anything and then they kind of suffer and a lot of it's due to War Thunder's compression. They haven't added in a lot of ships that they could so that they can spread out these trees and some of the top tier ships probably could be bumped up a little bit higher so they're not seeing these World War II or not sorry not World War II, World War I battle cruisers and battle ships that are kind of just sailing around and bouncing shells off anything or outright missing. They really can't keep up with the modern, or rather more modern, battleships and battlecruisers that they're trying to fight against. Now, as far as the actual fights go in these top tier matches, they tend to start at longer ranges than they do at the low tiers. Typically, good hits you'll start seeing get actually struck at about 16 kilometers, and the battles I'd say tend to stay around 10 kilometers if players can afford to. But, I have seen the battles where you're basically knife fighting other ships at 3-4 to four kilometers. You're just letting loose with broadsides into each other, shells are over penetrating, and just causing devastating destruction on each other at such tight ranges. So it does have a fairly varied range of activity. But, like I said, they tend to start at longer ranges than the destroyers will at low tier where 8 kilometers might be your maximum range that you can actually aim your guns. The fights tend to last a little bit longer too since the ships are a lot more armored, they have a lot more crew, 
and they're a lot less prone to sinking immediately short of their ammo getting detonated. A smart player aiming for a battleship's ammo rack or shell room, whatever you want to call it, who knows where it is and knows how to get to it will absolutely devastate an enemy ship immediately if they're not paying attention and taking maneuvers to avoid it. Some players do kind of sit back in camp. Uh, you kind of get a mix of players at camp, players that move around, and players that actually just rush the enemy team. I can't say there's a decent way to play either kind because some ships, you know, charging is what they do. Other ships, well, you don't want to take those hits because maybe you are that World War One battleship that I was talking about earlier, and you know that if you charge in, you're going to get absolutely shredded. So it's all in how your ship is built and how you want to participate in the match, I guess. There is a lot more use of float planes in the top tiers, mostly because the battleships aren't as fast as the destroyers and the maps are a lot larger. So you'll see players actually use their float planes to grab caps early or use them, in late, use them to do the same thing later in the game in order to stop the point bleed if the, on their team or, you know, make it faster to end the enemy team's game a little bit quicker. As per other planes that players spawn in, you do tend to see them, but they're not used as heavily as in the lower tiers because of how much anti-aircraft these more modern ships are packing. The battleships tend to be absolutely covered in them and God forbid you go near anything American because you're just going to get shredded. But at the same time, if it's a fleet defense map or if the bomber player tends to get very, very high in the air to where the anti-aircraft can't touch him, he and obviously is decent at dropping his bombs, they tend to kind of dominate if the player is good, but you really don't see that that often. Uh, it tends to be they'll fly in, they'll try to drop their bombs on one ship, they'll get shot down and, you know, respawn from there. Going off of my earlier comment about maps as well, the maps tend to be much larger. There are some that you will still see from the lower tiers, which really turns into a knife fight for these larger ships, especially when you're spawning eight kilometers away from each other. But they tend to be larger, they tend to be more open, like the single cap maps with no islands in the middle of them. Your ships also tend to be bigger than any island that you could possibly hide behind, so the enemy team will always be able to see you. And because of that, it leads to one of my biggest cons about these high tier matches, and that is revenge killing. In ground forces, I know that players will always complain about being revenge bombed by an enemy plane, but in naval we have to worry about revenge killing where you kill an enemy player they spawn in again and of course they immediately target you shell you and try to sink you while you're still tr struggling with the ship that you had before with any associated damage you also had before so you're already on the back foot from that the other thing i've noticed about this revenge killing is it can persist between matches I'm not sure if it's players perceiving you as a threat or if they just get really upset that you sunk them once or twice, but if you queue into the next match because it's a smaller player pool at the moment in the higher tier and they're on the enemy team again, it seems like a lot of players will have the tendency to immediately focus you out and try to kill you. So it is an interesting downside to the naval high tier to say the least. It's not the worst it could possibly be because you can still fight back, but it's something I've come to expect when I'm playing a battleship that once I sink an enemy player, they're most likely to come back and try to sink me and completely ignore anything closer to them and try to shell me from across the map. So it's, it's quite interesting. As per the objectives on maps, you'll actually find that players do tend to push the objectives or if the objectives is sink the enemy fleet, aka the parked AI boats in the back of the map, you'll see players actually go for them and try to earn their win out of the game. Though, sometimes you tend to not see players push the caps, they'll sit behind them and they'll wait for the Gaijin AI ships to actually push in. They'll kind of overwatch those and let the AI do the capping rather than risking their own ship. Either way, 
you tend to see the caps get taken a lot more and not ignored and players ha tend to have a little bit more enthusiasm to try to win the game rather than just eh I'll click it into the next one and off I'll go in my destroyer along with players actually trying to win the match times tend to be a little bit longer too due to players just slugging it out or whatever game mode it is so your earnings tend to be astronomically higher than they are at lower tiers 10,000 silver lions might be a low game I'd say and then you could earn upwards of 80,000 for a pretty decent game so anywhere in between that I'd say 30 to 40,000 is probably average and really researching isn't that hard you tend to do pretty quick gains on all that and you're not stuck researching the same modification for two weeks because it's so painfully slow to grind stuff so I don't think there's a lot of worry about that going off of my earlier comment about the Gaijin AI as well they tend to be a little bit more predominant than in the lower tiers due to less players having made their way to the top tiers and they still tend to be in the lower tier ships they'll be in light cruisers for the most part maybe some early heavy cruisers but you'll never see a Gaijin AI in a battleship or a battle cruiser it's just how they're made I guess and like I said they tend to just rush spawns or not rush spawns rush caps sorry it'd be weird if they were rushing spawns as per the actual player bot accounts I haven't seen any at the high tiers it might be that the ships that are tend to used for bot accounts can't quite get to these top tiers which is kind of a shame because they'd be fun to shred at the top tiers but either way they are pretty much non-existent up there along with very few players actually just spawning into matches with just a top tier premium ship uh, I haven't seen I've seen it once or twice but I haven't seen it very often it's not like ground or air where somebody's spawning in with a single plane that they just bought after they just downloaded the game and they're gonna go try to have a fun time and suddenly their teammates on fire due to one of their missiles and everything's going to hell so thankfully you don't see that a lot at the top tiers on that note I've reached the end of my list as per a brief summary of what these top tier games are like they're actually a lot more entertaining in my opinion than the old World of Warships games just because you don't have players that are bow in people are actually trying to brawl in ships and charging for objectives and not worrying about the random destroyer that's gonna nuke half their HP points and yeah it's just a lot more fun it's a lot more realistic as per what these ships were played like you do still see people angling their armor but it's nothing like the world of warships where you just sit there with your bow gun in and everything else on the back of your ship is completely useless to you for the most of the match anyways guys if you have any other questions feel free to let me know and good luck out there i'll see you next time